and I'm Joe Eamonheiser. I'm an extension livestock educator, uh, livestock specialist here with Yukon, and I also teach animal science courses. Uh, and we're here to talk about fences today. So when you're considering fence types, there's a lot of things to, to keep in mind. And first and foremost, of course, is going to be, will it keep the animals in? And will it keep predators or anything I don't want out? Um, beyond that, there's a whole raft of things to consider. And very quickly, um, some of the biggest differences are cost. Cost per linear foot uh, varies tremendously with fence. And this vinyl fence is pretty, but it's expensive and it's cost prohibitive for a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of operations that aren't trying to maintain the aesthetics that Yukon is. Initially, if we think back to you know, the evolution of these animals, Many of them were pastoral, they covered wide ranges, they moved around where they wanted to. Then we developed this concept called land ownership as humans that made it our responsibility or, or our interest perhaps to contain the animals that we domesticated and used for product. And so that's why we have fences in general. Uh, every different kind of animal has you know, different size, different shape, different behaviors, uh, different needs for different types of terrain. And so the types of fences match those types of animals depending on, on their nature. So like I said way back at the beginning, the nature of fence started with the domestication of animals and the concept of property ownership and, and having to maintain pieces of land and contain animals. Uh, in terms of the well-being of the animals, um, from the very beginning, domestication is a responsibility to animal welfare. And so it's important uh, to make sure that the type of fence that's, that's provided for animals is conducive to their welfare. And that includes things like the physical attributes of the fence, but also what is the fence containing? And one of the things I like to say for all producers is the best, the best fence for any livestock is good feed on the inside. So the recommendations for fence materials are going to vary a, a lot depending on the needs for the fence. Um, you know, but in, in general, some things to consider, like I talked about, are security and cost. And, and once I visit with a producer and I have a better idea of what their goals are uh, in terms of those things and what their budget is, uh, that allows me to narrow the options considerably. Um, some of the basic materials, um, you know, going back to the, the old stone wall here in Connecticut, uh, it's certainly a resource that's pretty, pretty widely available uh, and works pretty effectively um, to contain some classes of livestock uh, if we build the, the walls high enough. Um, we also have a prevalence of wood here. And so there's a lot of fences uh, that are made of split rails uh, or sawn logs in, in, into boards one way or the other. Um, and that's a resource that's relatively available and relatively inexpensive um, you know, compared to some of the, the materials that might require importation. That being said, you know, wood rots and so it needs to be maintained. It needs to be preserved, painted one way, shape or form, uh, or that fence is not going to last terribly long. Okay, so there's going to be a need for fence for a long time. We're seeing a lot of advances in technology that make things a lot easier in, in many ways. Uh, specific to fencing, I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, for increasing development with solar panels, uh, with solar panels that charge batteries that have longer lives, that allow electric fences, uh, which tend to be one of the more secure and relatively inexpensive fences that can go many different places, uh, makes them more secure, more approachable for the average person. Beyond that, another neat technology that, that I see uh, already starting to emerge, and I think it will continue to develop, uh, is the ability to manage fences and specifically manage gates from remotely. Just like we have you know, opportunities to get on our iPhone and manage our heat uh, at home while we're at, at work. Uh, you know, opportunity to get on a phone view through cameras, uh, you know, gates or pastures that are already set up and pre-programmed to open a particular gate at a specific time of the day to allow animals to move more effectively in, in concert with the sun and with 
the development of the grass, which is going to change over the course of a grazing season, uh, but also even in the course of a day, the energy content of grasses change with the sun. And just like animals naturally move around to get to forages that you know, are more appropriate at different times of the day, if we have the opportunity to do that remotely with gates uh, that we can access from afar and not have to use all those footsteps ourselves, that's a big technological leap that I think is going to significantly revolutionize um, this new world of grazing with fences.